Ladies and gentlemen, our first guest on the show tonight is a father presenter and one of the most loved comedians in Australia. A great man and a great friend. Please welcome Lawrence Mooney. <laughs> hey, mate. Hello, Tommy. Did you have a seat. Happy Christmas. Ho, ho, Happy ho. Christmas. Merry Christmas. Oh. You got a present already. I got a present from Santa and uh, it's because it's Christmas in March. Yeah. Um, Which is, we didn't time. spare anything on the wrapping, did we? It's time for my... Oh, it's a couple of donuts! Hello! <laughs> my favourite. Now, now, because it's Christmas in March, Tommy, I've got to share with you my one and only Christmas joke, which is, uh, why does Santa... Uh, why does Santa have such a full sack? Why? Because he only comes once a year. <laughs> and, and when he does come, he comes down your chimney. Hey! <laughs> Is that snow in the fireplace? I don't think so. <laughs> now, Mr. Mooney, can I wow. firstly say... Uh, Santa, what have you been doing with those? <laughs> Santa fingers. Yep. It doesn't save it all for the chimney. No. Um, now, mate, you're looking fantastic. I am fantastic. Look at that. I've dropped five kilos. Will this happen to be have anything to do with you not drinking? I am not drinking. I've taken the pledge. I've got off the booze and... The biggest single uh, effect of that is that uh, Twitter is no longer interesting. Because um, <laughs> I used to sit at home on a Friday night and drink my standard bottle of red wine, then I'd mix myself a nice dry martini and wash down a Valium. Yeah. <laughs> was I happy? You bet I was, and I miss it. <laughs> and uh, then I would tweet some crazy shit, and then you'd wake up in the morning and you'd think, Oh, normally I would say that to my wife or some close friends, but now I've said it to 1,300 people and it's been retweeted and it wasn't good. We loved it. We, I loved everyone getting, loved it. I love yeah. getting Mooney drunk tweets. Yeah, I, maybe I should try and replicate that, but sober. Well, you can't get the anger though. No. You know how when you're drunk and you're just like, no, why don't you? you no. Yeah, with your cushions and your legs, come on. <laughs> but it also acted as a bit of a catalyst because sometimes I would read your dr drunk tweets and I'd be like, oh, well, if Mooney's, if Mooney's doing it, let's get, in, let's get involved. Well, that's the thing I've always w wanted to be. I wanted to be an inspiration to young people on... Uh, <laughs> I, I want them to get, you know, completely smashed and destroy their private lives and their careers. And that's what I want to be. I want to be a bastion of of self-abuse and, uh, <laughs> and and held up like, like the Dalai Lama but for drunks. But so, <laughs> but so you've, you've quit this, how, how long have you not I'm been drinking 10 before? weeks off the booze. 10 weeks, okay. So I've dropped five kilos and I've got to say, it, uh, it makes your penis look bigger. Um, just because comparatively the rest of your body is The small. pregnancy's gone <laughs> yeah. and you just go, that looks bigger. Yeah. And, uh, but so and that's important. <laughs> that, uh, that's a tip for young players out there. <laughs> Put the penis pumps away and get off the yeah, boat. Yeah, yeah. If you want to, yeah, no penis pumps, just do a couple of crunches. All of a sudden, hey, that's flat. <laughs> so let's talk about, during that time off the booze, you've uh, performed at the Adelaide Fringe Festival. Two weeks at the Adelaide Fringe Festival, living with a, uh, another recovering alcoholic, um, Fiona O'Loughlin. Right. We're in a flat together. Drinking tea I was gonna and say, boring the hell out of one another, and just talking about how good it used to be when we were blind. Yeah. <laughs> just going, we can't. We promised our families, and it's like, oh, come on. What's your? And they've got a mini bar. They've got a mini bar there, like the bottle of wine. I said to Fiona, I could finish that in like, I reckon, ten minutes flat, <laughs> no less. Just and she goes, go on, I. Hey, you're meant to be helping. Yeah. Now. Uh, what did you do? Like, like in terms of Adelaide, what are you the, only, about? the only time, oh. the only the, when you're in Adelaide, it seems like all you do is drink and do your shows. So without that drinking time, I mean, apart from drinking tea, did other activities get taken up? Did you actually see parts of Adelaide this year? Yeah, I saw parts of Adelaide. Um, I did a, bit, did a bit of reading. What did I do? Just drugs and alcohol make everything better. <laughs> um, you know, they do. And hey. uh, so Adelaide, without it, I don't know. We, I went home, I watched a you know, few movies for $16.95 a time. It's good. Hey, if you're ever in a hotel room and you're going five, through the movies, and I'm not talking about the adult movies, I'm thinking, you know, you're going through the movies and you see a movie with um, Natalie Portman in called Love and Other Impossible Pursuits. And you think, hey, I, I think I might watch that. It looks kind of romantic. 
what you should do is slam your genitals in a drawer <laughs> because it'll be less painful than watching that <laughs> horrific movie. It, every character is irredeemable. They're so self-obsessed. I wanted everyone to die in the end. But slowly, I went, please get diagnosed with cancer. See, and this is a sober Mooney. Imagine the tweets that would have come oh. out of a drunk Mooney. <laughs> Cop that Don't Christmas write donut. in and go, oh, people in Africa haven't got donuts. <laughs> we've got, of course I haven't. We've got to re-gift that later, and now right. we've just got a smashed you donut for someone. Eat a smashed donut. <laughs> now, Mooney, let's... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> We've got a very cool floor manager, Peace. <laughs> let's wind back the clock a little bit. Let's go I, back. Uh, I read, I read a, a bio of yours that said Lawrence Mooney went from actor to rent boy to comedy. How did the rent boy work uh, end out? Uh, I always wonder if I had have gone into prostitution, Tommy, exactly how I would have gone. I love it how you... I love it how you, you've just completely glossed over your past and now you're repainting it as a hypothetical situation. Yeah. Because <laughs> I reckon I would have done all right. Because I've got some... I've got very nice legs. Okay. Okay. Give us a rate. Are what you, are we talking? All right. I used to turn tricks for 20 bucks a time. And... Uh, are we talking the full deal? I full slept deal? my way to the top. You know, when I was doing <laughs> breakfast radio on Mix, I, I got that job because... Uh, uh, I don't know what aren't uh, means, if it but helps, I think you get the idea. I'm trying to sleep my way, not even to the top at the moment, just to some kind of middle ground. Sharon Stone once said you can only sleep your way to number two. And... Uh, I just like that. I like the idea of Sharon Stone being really slutty. <laughs> through some cold nights in Adelaide. Now, we should talk about some serious stuff because you've got a lot of work going on at the moment. You've got your comedy festival show called An Indecisive Bag of Donuts. An Indecisive Bag of Donuts opens at the Melbourne International Comedy Festival on the 31st of March. Boom. You can get tickets. There's only a few left, so rush right now. <laughs> Don't laugh. It's the truth. Only a very few left. Uh, on comedyfestival.com.au. You've also got an exciting new project with Sam Pang. I have. Been on this very show. Uh, Sam Pang, who co-hosted um, Cup Fever yeah. with Ed Cavalli and Sam right. Chilaro. We've got a, an internet project, a new episode every week. It's called The Match Committee, so check it out. It's footy, talking all things footy. Talking all things footy, but it's little vignettes and uh, their comedy. We're getting the big wind here, the big one. And uh, so go to that, but also buy tickets to my show, uh, An Indecisive Bag of Donuts. It's all about procrastination. Lawrence Mooney, it's not only a pleasure to have you on the show because I, I love your work and I think yeah. you're a great person, it's also a pleasure because you just did all the work I have to do. Yeah, I do all the reads, Tommy. Ladies and gentlemen, please thank Lawrence Mooney. <laughs> Don't go away, we'll be right back after this. Thanks, mate. Cool.